The Habs get back to their winning ways in Detroit with a tight shootout victory behind an unbelievable performance from Jake Allen and an unlikely breakout game from Mike Hoffman. But it's not all good news in Habs land as Uri Slavkovsky got five in a game for a bad board. We might be talking suspension. I'm going to be breaking it all down so you won't want to miss this game reaction edition of Habs Digest. Hello, bonjour, ahoy, and welcome to today's game reaction edition of Habs Digest for the Habs vs. Red Wings. I'm your host, Josh Goss, and before we get into the video, don't forget that about 85% of you guys are not subscribed. We've been doing amazing with the subscribers. You guys have been supporting the channel for every single video, and we want you to keep that up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, so you can see when we first post every bit of daily Habs content. Alright, let's get into the game. Uh, this was a tight one. This was a fun game. It had a had a bit of everything. It was a little chippy at points. We had some some fun goals from unlikely sources. It went to a shootout where we ended up getting, of course, two goals in the shootout from who else but Suzuki and Caulfield. Uh, but the first thing I want to talk about in this video, the thing that I'm sure a lot of you are coming to this video for, was that dirty hit from Uri Slavkovsky. And I'm saying right now that that hit was dirty. I'm starting off the video with this so that we can talk about all the positives later. Um, and if you want to, maybe I'll put a timestamp for after I talk about this hit. But if you're interested, we got to discuss it. I mean, you know, we complained about Rossi's hit on Slavkovsky, thinking it was dirty. And if we thought that was dirty, which I personally didn't, but I wasn't a huge fan of it, we got to think this is dirty, right? Anderson's hit on Petrangelo was bad, but unfortunately for us... There's no redeeming qualities in this one. To me, it looked like Luff had his back turned. The numbers were showing the whole way. Slavkovsky went right up to him. He didn't speed through him like Anderson did, but he definitely followed through, and it was just dangerous. That distance from the boards, Luff hit his face first right into the boards, was bleeding, immediately went into the locker room and did not return. I, you know, they reviewed it. Slavkovsky got five in a game, which totally fair, and I think he will be having a hearing for that. I think if Anderson had a hearing for the hit on Petrangelo, this also definitely deserves a hearing. It's sad to say because these Habs forwards, I mean, we're probably going to have to play Michael Bezzetta. It's a weird time to have Rem Pitlick be sent down. Of course, he wasn't claimed today, which is good, um, but we'll have to maybe play Pizzetta I because I feel like Slavkovsky might miss a game or two here. I think this hit was very similar to Anderson's, but I think that in this case, Luff's numbers were showing basically the whole time. And I hate it because I love Slavkovsky. I know a lot of you who are watching, especially those of you who are Slovakian, who tune into every single video, we thank you so much for your support. But this is a really unfortunate time because while Slavkovsky is by no means a dirty player, he's young, he's used to European ice still. I mean, I don't want to use that as an excuse. There's no excuse for what he did. It was a stupid play, and, you know, the camera panned to him, and immediately you saw the look on his face. He mouthed a, a word that I'm not going to repeat here. He was really disappointed with himself, and he knew he did something wrong. And you could tell even the Detroit players, while they did go after him, they weren't, like, completely destroying him. I think a lot of people realize this was a mistake. A bad mistake, brutal mistake, and it should be punished, but a mistake nonetheless. We all love Uri Slavkovsky here. He's been so fun to watch play for Montreal. I thought he had a great game tonight before that. Uh, we can only hope that he doesn't get suspended for this. You know, first offense, maybe a fine, who knows. But um, I wasn't a fan of it. I do think it was dirty, but I don't think he'll do it again. And I definitely don't think it was intentional. Moving on from that, let's get into the amazing positives of tonight. The big story is Mike Hoffman. Coming into this game so cold, Mike Hoffman comes in and has himself a game. Early in the first period, not too long into it at all, Brendan Gallagher comes in from a beautiful stretch pass from Jordan Harris in his own zone. Gallagher flies up the left wing, cuts into the offensive zone, fires a shot on Billy Huso, couldn't quite control the rebound, was a bit up high, handcuffed him, went right to the other side of the net, wide open cage, yawning cage for Mike Hoffman, who pots it. Oh, and it was just such a good feeling to see him score because he's been used as a scapegoat by, you know, not, I was going to say, you know, Habs fans in general, but it's, even me, like I, I've been, I've been pretty harsh on Hoffman, maybe not as harsh as some of you. Um, but I mean, he hasn't been impressive. Straight up hasn't been impressive. A lot of people have wanted, you know, they wanted him waved over Rem Pitlick or sent down to the AHL, even though he's making four and a half million dollars a year. Um, but you know, he was due for a goal. 
And it wasn't a snipe by any means, but he was due for a goal. And even if just it's just to see the puck go in the net, that can be the catalyst for a lot of for a lot of guys, right? They finally see the puck go in the net. It just shoots their confidence up, and and they just go on a goal scoring tear. So Hoffman scored pretty early. I mean, Montreal was off to a to a really good start in the first period. But another common theme I talk about in every single video, and it happened again tonight a bunch, is that Montreal gets penalties. It feels like we only get penalties when we are playing well. And tonight was no different. Right after that Hoffman goal, well, not not maybe right after, but really not too long after, Arbor Jack Eye gets an interference penalty. And he's been he's been leading the team in PIMS. I believe he's second in the NHL in penalty minutes. He's really I love Arbor Jack Eye. I love having him on the team, but he's still a little bit undisciplined. He's getting a lot of questionable penalties that we really don't need, especially untimely penalties like this one. Montreal scores, we want to keep momentum, and Arbor Jack Eye goes out and gets a penalty right after. Again, luckily, um we did they didn't score on that on that power play. Um, but man, like it's just scary because it's not a theme that you want to have happen all the time, but we're what, like 12, 13 games into the season now. And Montreal has done this almost every single game. Maybe not always right after a goal, but it's, it's often after we go on a nice pressure, you know, we're in the offensive zone for a couple minutes and we come back and they get a scoring chance and we take a penalty. It happens a lot and I, I'm sick of it and I don't want it to happen anymore. Um, I think Jack, I again, just needs a little more discipline. I don't think he's, playing poorly or anything don't get me wrong it was cool to see him on the second power play unit tonight but these kind of penalties need to stop you know jordan harris got one against vegas um it's just not a recipe for success um but let, while we're on the topic of penalties let's just talk about the special teams tonight i thought our penalty kill was pretty good tonight actually in general we gave up some i mean jake allen was amazing like he made he bailed us out a million times on the penalty kill uh, and actually you know what? before we talk about special teams let me just focus on jake allen um, cause for those of you who maybe didn't get a chance to watch the game, Jake Allen, like you can look at the score sheet and see he made what 41 saves tonight. I think Detroit finished with 43 shots. And I would say, I, I think probably 10 or 12 of them, 12, 10 or 12 of those shots came while Montreal was on the penalty kill. And not only that, like I would say probably 20 of them were like decent scoring chance shots, like not high danger chances, but solid ones. I mean, he, he made a number of cross crease saves, breakaway saves. Dylan Larkin got a penalty shot. Montreal's first power play tonight, we gave up a shorthanded penalty shot to Dylan Larkin. Not only did Allen make the save on the initial breakaway, because uh, he got slashed by Kirby Doc on the breakaway, it didn't really affect his shot, um, but they gave him a penalty shot anyway, as they should have. Doc can't get his hands in there, but he also made the save on the penalty shot. Um, he made a few breakaway saves late in the game as well. Cross creases just all over the ice, keeping us in the game from the first second to the very last second i mean such a, as brian mudrick said at the end of the game well well deserved two points for jake allen he won the team this game tonight him and mike hoffman which is kind of interesting um but yeah let's get into this penalty kill uh so penalty kill was good except for that shorthanded breakaway um but our power play again just looked and we didn't get a lot of power play chances tonight uh in fact i believe only one power play uh detroit did take a penalty late but it was in the middle of Slavkovsky's five-minute major, so that was just two minutes of four-on-four four time. We didn't get any power play time out of that. Uh, so we really only had one power play chance, and we gave up a shorthanded penalty shot. So it wasn't great. Again, uh, I mean, the second power play looked okay. Slavkovsky had a chance, a couple chances where he could have shot. Uh, maybe he lost the puck a bit, but eh, it was just, like, average. I mean, I don't think it was a bad power play. I don't think it was good tonight. I think it was just average, and honestly, a lot of this game kind of felt that way especially as a Montreal fan watching this, I thought Detroit outplayed us for long stretches in this game, as has been a theme for Montreal. First period, we got outshot badly, badly, badly. Um, and of course, well, that first period is where most of this action happened, to be honest. I mean, Montreal went up 1-0 with Hoffman. Uh, Detroit comes down. We, we had some bad defense. We had two defensemen pin, uh, pinching under the net, led to an easy one-time goal, uh, five-hole. I think it was five hole for, uh, I forget his name on Detroit starts with the uh, CZ. You might see it in the bottom. I, I feel bad for not remembering his name, but it was his first with the Red Wings. I think he scored with the Islanders last season. So congratulations to him. Uh, it was blown defensive coverage and he was wide open in the slot. Great. But later in that first period, what felt like deja vu when I saw it, I mean, the first goal Gallagher flew up the left wing, shot high on Billy Huso, went right to the opposite side of the net for an open Hoffman putback rebound goal. 
and guess what happened the second time? Gallagher didn't fly up the left wing this time, but he cut right up the middle, then kind of went to the left side, went in the offensive zone, put a shot, exact same place, exact same rebound, exact same goal. Mike Hoffman with two goals in the first period, both off of an opposite side, Brendan Gallagher rebound on Vili Huso. I thought that was awesome to see. It was really cool to see Hoffman finally pot two goals for us. Um, you know, you can only hope that this will lead to more production in the future. I mean, I hope so. Like, I know a lot of you really don't like Hoffman. I'm not a huge fan either, but if Hoffman can get going, like, he's got a goal-scoring touch. He has a hard shot, and even if he just gets a little going, we can maybe trade him for a pick draft compensation or maybe a maybe an AHL, like a solid AHL, fringe NHL guy. Like, just some kind of comp or compensation back from Montreal uh, if we are going to get rid of him. Uh, but I thought that was an interesting line tonight. And it clearly worked really well putting Hoffman out there with Gallagher uh, and Dvorak in Josh Anderson's absence. And, I mean, it worked well. Uh, I thought that line was kind of all over the puck. Galley was hustling again. Two assists for him tonight. Of course, both on shots, not on passes. But I digress. It's okay. Uh, but they had a really good first period. But after the first period, into the second period, Montreal really, really just kind of fell off the rails it felt like Detroit was pinning us in our own zone just minute after minute I mean even in the first period honestly before that second goal we were there was three or four minutes straight where Detroit was just hemming us in our own zone before Hoffman ended up scoring to break that tie but Montreal was getting outshot the whole game the entire game we ended up getting outshot by 10 or something Detroit had over 40 shots again and that you know our defense our defense is trying their hardest like Edmondson and Savar have have been amazing at blocking shots especially Edmondson since he's come back but I believe Savar is second in the NHL in block shots or at least top five he's been really really good so far this season but we're giving Detroit a lot of chances we're allowing passes across the ice that maybe we shouldn't be allowing it feels like our defensive pressure isn't as good as it could be again a lot of young guys a lot of mistakes are going to be made we saw Kovacevic in for Weidman again tonight which I thought was interesting a Kovacevic played played all right he had a nice shot I mean he had a chance to score his first NHL goal uh, didn't quite go his way but um yeah I mean it's tough because Montreal we know we're not an amazing defensive team this team is built for high octane offense. Some it's a fast team. It's a young team. We're built for scoring chances. And as Martin Saint Louis has said about his, especially about his power play, we're out there to score goals. We're not about out there to prevent breakaways and stuff like that. Even though Jonathan Drouin gave up a breakaway, but whatever. Um, we're out there to score goals, and our defense should be better. But right now, it's not killing us too much because our goalies have been playing so well. Both Allen and Montembeau are. are playing amazing so far this year and both of them are actually performing very well by a few advanced goalie metrics so it's nice to see that we have some uh some brick walls back there behind our you know, somewhat porous defense though again like 40 shots every game especially to a team like Detroit like that can't possibly be sustainable I mean I know this game went to a shootout I know that Montreal came out with the win but God, it really didn't feel like we outplayed Detroit for this game. It felt like Montreal got a few chances. We capitalized on some chances that we got. Uh, we could have capitalized a little more, but it felt like Detroit was all over us for most of this game. And we got maybe not lucky. Uh, well, I, I guess a little lucky, but our penalty kill at the end of the game was good on that five minute major. We killed that off. Of course, we had two minutes of four on four time in there. We killed that off and and uh, we went into overtime. Well, Hoffman actually took a penalty near the end of that too. Even in overtime, there was a power play. So so Montreal's penalty kill was very solid. Uh, overtime was rather boring. There were no amazing chances. I, I mean, it is what it is. Montreal was in the penalty kill for a chunk of it. Uh, but the penalty kill was good. I'm going to keep reiterating that. I thought it was awesome tonight. Of course, we killed off that five-minute major with the four-on-three in overtime after Hoffman took a necessary tripping call when Detroit had a nice chance late in regulation. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think there's too much more to talk about than this. I mean, let's talk about the shootout goals. I mean, we saw Caulfield and Suzuki, the two Molson Cup winners, the boys. Um, they came in and they performed exactly how we wanted them to in the shootout. Caulfield comes in, just a beautiful shot, like right under the glove of Huso. And Suzuki comes in, just, I, I, I even said before the shot, he's going to do something a little fancy. It wasn't super fancy, but he came in wide and, and held the puck out, just waited, waited, waited. And as soon as Huso... You can see Huso was playing short side, playing for his glove side. That's where Caulfield shot. That's where his mind was. Suzuki, Suzuki just kind of looks at that and says, "Yeah, there's room on the other side. Fires it far, far side where there was a ton of uh, a ton of room. So, of course, David Perron made it close. But unfortunately for Detroit, Dylan Larkin couldn't bury that goal on Detroit's third shot, sealing the win for Montreal. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, there's not much more to talk about than that. I thought overall Montreal played okay. We got over 30 shots, which is good. Uh, we're blocking shots, which is good. Our penalty kill looks good. Hoffman is back on track, which is good. And Suzuki and Caulfield scored in the shootout, which is obviously amazing. Plus, Jake Allen, once again, backstops this team to a victory. Sure, we had Slavkovsky's hit, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be talking about that. And, you know, I spoke about that for a while at the beginning of this video, and I really don't like it. I, 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 I you just know the Montreal media is going to be all over him for that. And you know that the hockey sphere is going to be calling him a dirty player for that. I think he's regretful. I'm sure we'll hear more about this tomorrow. Uh, we'll be doing a news video tomorrow, and I'm sure we'll have a lot of quotes from Hab staff, players, coaches, anything. Uh, about that Slavkovsky hit, and maybe we'll hear from the Department of Player Safety as to whether or not he's going to be having a hearing for that. But other, other than that, I guess that'll do it for this Game Reaction Edition of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. We're going for 2,000 subs before Christmas. I've changed it from New Year's to Christmas because I know you guys, it'd be a great Christmas gift for me I, to get 2,000 subs for me and Jesse, uh, who hasn't been able to be here for the last few videos, but he will be back soon. Uh, it'd be a great Christmas gift to us, and I know you guys can help us out with that. But I've been Josh Goss, and we'll see you in the next video.